Jose Rizal is supposed to have said, ang di marunong lumingon sa pinanggalingan, di makararating sa paroroonan, or he who does not know where he came from will not reach his destination. This is an often quoted line from Rizal, which isn't by Rizal at all. And if we are to really look for something that he said about history, the nicest thing he wrote is, Con el recuerdo del pasado entro en el porvenir. In English, it's, I enter the future with a memory of the past. This is a quote that we should remember in the days when social media, the internet, and Google has flooded us with so much information that we cannot possibly humanly digest all of it. So we have to learn to move into the future carrying a memory of the past because it is that that will help us in looking at and evaluating what we now call fake news. Fake news is not new. We've had it a long time. But in the past, fake news was easily or regularly corrected by research or by institutions like the press or the academe. What we are seeing today is an assault on truth. Fake news or fake history has to be seen always in terms of its intention. Is it made for fun? Is it made because of ignorance? Or is it deliberate misinformation? If you Google Jose Rizal today and check the images part, you will get a whole range of Rizal's picture, Rizal's mugshot, and it usually comes from a photograph, his favorite photograph taken in 1890. However, there is a photograph of Rizal in Masonic garb. And because it came from the US Library of Congress, people believe it to be true. But all you have to do is to look at the photograph of this man in Masonic attire and compare it with Rizal to see that these are two different people. So something is wrong somewhere. Many years ago, I received a query asking me to confirm whether this long lost photograph of Rizal was actually Rizal's. And when I looked at it, it was actually the head of Manny Pacquiao photoshopped on Abraham Lincoln's body. This was a, a made up picture that made the rounds and it was made for fun. But some people want to believe what they want to believe, want to see what they want to see, and actually believe that this Photoshop picture of Pacquiao is actually Rizal. When I was a boy, I learned that Rizal had lost one of his slippers while he was playing near a river. And when he went home barefoot, of course, his parents asked him, what happened to your slippers? And Rizal is supposed to have said, I lost one slipper and since this is useless to me, I threw in the other one because there might be a little boy downstream who will find the pair and it will be useful to him. If I'm the little boy downstream and I'm playing, and I see one slipper float by, I won't pick it up and wait for the next slipper to come, right? It is a story that is made up because it is meant to teach us a moral story. It is meant as a lesson for children to learn. So it is not exactly true, but its intention is good. With Rizal, we have a mixture of fact, fancy, and what Caroline Howe, the literary scholar calls necessary fictions. In a 1950 public school textbook, I saw a story that claimed that Rizal was the inventor of Champurado. Rizal was eating one morning and he accidentally tipped over a cup of chocolate that sp spilled over his plate with rice. And so one of his sisters said, you know, you're a clumsy little boy, why did you do that? 
And Rizal is supposed to have said, no, I did that on purpose. Because if you mix chocolate and rice, you get champurado. If you actually look at the origin of champurado, champurado is not a Philippine meal, it's actually a Mexican meal. So we have a meal that sounds the same, but it's not like the real Mexican champurado, and we have our national hero inventing something which he did not. So this is the type of thing that we get, that we have a Rizal who's supposed to teach us nationalism, patriotism, and all the good things which we are not. Of the two quotes that I have found, one is the quote about history, and the second is the quote about language, which we hear every year in August during Buwan ng Wika. And this is the most quoted line from Jose Rizal. It says, Ang hindi magmahal sa sariling wika, masahol pa sa hayop at malansang hisda. It came from a poem called Sa Aking Kababata, which was supposedly written when Rizal was eight years old. I found out that unlike most of the things that I know about Rizal, Sa Aking Kababata does not have or is not supported by an original manuscript. It was published posthumously in a book on Florante at Laura by a man named Herminihildo Cruz. It's in an appendix and it just says this is Rizal's first poem. It was given to one of his childhood playmates and I checked the name of the childhood playmate. It does not match up with any of the documentation that I know of. Rizal wrote mostly in Spanish. And there are only two poems of Rizal in Tagalog. Both of them are questionable. When you look at Sa Aking Kababata, you ask yourself, how could an eight-year-old boy in Calamba compare Tagalog with Latin and Spanish and Greek? How can an eight-year-old boy in Calamba talk about freedom, which he uses twice in the poem? the word kalayaan. When I checked through Rizal's correspondence, I found out that the first time Rizal had ever heard the word kalayaan, freedom, was in 1882. He was already 21 years old in a poem that Marcelo del Pilar was translating. Rizal also mentions in his writings that when he was translating William Tell from German into Tagalog, he was stumped by the word Freiheit, which in German means freedom. This was 1886, and Rizal could not find the Tagalog equivalent of Freiheit. And so how can Rizal forget a word that he used twice in an 1869 poem? So what we know is that Rizal did not write Sa Aking Kabata. When we talk history, when we study about Jose Rizal and our heroes, we are taught to remember, to memorize facts, to remember who, what, when, where, how. But more importantly, history should teach us that it is more than memorization. It is more than data. History teaches us to be critical, to question even the things that we think to be real. And that helps us to separate the true from the false and fact from opinion. We have a photograph of Jose Rizal's execution in the Luneta on December 30, 1896. And it is a photograph where Rizal is standing shortly before he is shot. That is the only picture we have. Although over the years, some other pictures have come out including one that actually shows the volley of fire and Rizal falling dead. Because of this, people have started to doubt even the authentic picture. So what happens here is we don't know what to believe and we end up believing what we want to believe. So with Rizal, for example, we have other things. There are urban legends that persist. One of them, and the most popular, is that Rizal is supposed to be the father of Adolf Hitler. In 1913, Rizal's friend, Maximo Viola, wrote a memoir called Mis Viajes con el Dr. Rizal, or My Travels with Dr. Rizal, 
In May of 1887, Viola and Rizal were in Vienna and they stayed in the Hotel Metropole. We actually have a photograph of the receipt of the hotel that gives us the room numbers they stayed in. Hitler's mother, Clara Poltz, is supposed to have worked in the Hotel Metropole in Vienna. And it is this very faint connection that is the root of the urban legend that Rizal is the father of Adolf Hitler. All you have to do is to look up Hitler's birthday, which is April 20, 1889, and you will actually find out that Rizal was nowhere near Austria or Vienna in 1889. He was actually in London, in the British Library, doing his research on the pre-Spanish Philippines. This was also quite funny because when I dug it up, I didn't realize that Adolf Hitler's real name was Alois Schickelgruber, a name that sounds very funny to us and it gives you the, the sense of how powerful a name can be because you cannot shout Heil Schickelgruber. doesn't sound very nice, but Adolf Hitler has a very strong ring to it. Jose Rizal was in London, so he's not Adolf Hitler's father. But this led to another urban legend. Jose Rizal actually moved to Paris in 1889 in order to print the Successos de las Islas Filipinas. Now, at the time that Rizal was in London doing research in the British Library, Jack the Ripper murders occurred. And as we know, Jack the Ripper was never caught, but he killed with a sharp instrument that suggested that A, he had medical training, that's Rizal, or B, he killed with a scalpel, that's Rizal again. Now, the important part to remember here is that Rizal is in London at the time the murders occur. And when he moves to Paris, the murders stop. Now, if you open the Jack the Ripper website, it has a long list of suspects, and you will be surprised to find that Jose Rizal is one of the suspects in the Jack the Ripper murders. And I remember one of my undergraduate students once told me when I said this in class, he said, you know, sir, everyone else has missed out on the biggest clue of all. And I said, what's the biggest clue? And he says, J.R. Jack the Ripper and Jose Rizal share the same initials. Normally, I would laugh, but I like to think that this is a student who's thinking, he's just trying to be funny, but in many ways, I learn a lot more from my students than they learn from me. And I'd like to think that even when they're making fun, their mind is working, their mind is thinking, their mind is thinking critically, which is what we are all talking about today.